Now, all of us must have heard of the wonderful story of, of Christian the lion. I'm here with John Rendell, who was Christian's much loved owner. And um, he's here tonight supporting Lion Aid. Um, um, and you're a patron, aren't you, to Lion I'm Aid? I'm honored to be a patron. And I mean, I think this is a fantastic gathering this evening. And very interesting to see the clips of people supporting them. And um, I mean, I'm very lucky that the, the Christian story is a very up story. And um, it's had a fantastic reaction. We've had over um, 100 million people have looked at that YouTube clip of the reunion mm. when we went back a year later. And that's a very, very positive story. And that's had a big impact on conservation. But suddenly with this whole thing with Cecil, we've got, had yet another one, a different dimension. Because when we took Christian back to um, Kenya in 1970, there were 400,000 lions living in the wild in Africa on the continent. And today, as Lion Aid have pointed out, there are less than 15,000. There are less, rhino, uh, less lions than there are rhinos. There are 27,000 rhinos left in Africa, and there's only 15,000 lions. No, it's, it's, it's absolutely terrible, isn't it? I mean, what, what do you think is the most important message to, to be getting out to people right now? What can people be doing about this? Well, I think in the West, we're, you know, we're sitting back here and we're saying this is what you've got to do. When you're in Africa, there are people there, there's a huge population explosion. They need the land, so the land where lions once roamed and, and hunted are being taken away from them. So there's this huge human-lion conflict. But what we've got to stress is that the ongoing source of income for those African countries is if they keep the wildlife. Because Kenya is a wonderful country. I love it. I've been going there. I go there every year, a couple of times a year. Um, but I go for the wildlife. I don't go for the beaches. The beaches are fabulous somewhere else. Um, the food's not amazing. You know, you go to France or Italy yeah. for wonderful food. You go to Kenya for the wildlife. And that is their second source of income. So if the wildlife's gone, they're actually losing a whole swathe of income which of course is going to impact on the population completely. I mean, what, what would actually put a stop to all this hunting? I mean, if, if it was to be, firstly, obviously, if it was to be banned, yep. that you could not go trophy hunting. And of course, yes. I think that lions now are at a point where you could actually say they, these, these are critically endangered animals. Yep. The hunting must stop. And then countries like Asia need to stop importing the bones and, and other products well, like that. It's, it's a matter of education, the fact that Perfectly intelligent people like Chinese, who are brilliant in business in so many ways, can believe that rhino horn can be of any medicinal or aphrodisiac um, use is bizarre to me. And then with the canned lions, obviously their bones as well end up going well, back to Asia as well, don't well, they? Well, what's happened to see the tiger populations drop so, so far? I mean, there are only 300 Sumatran tigers left in the world, so they're very closely guarded. So what are they now looking at? They'll use lion bones. Well, a lion bone, that's not going to do you any good. It really isn't. You know? no, no. So it's really a matter of education. I mean, I'm also a trustee of the George Adamson Trust because I work with George uh, Adamson. And um, we run two um, national parks, one in Kenya and one in Tanzania. And the one around both of them, we have built or assisted building schools. Mm. And, have to, and we're saying to these kids, look, you see these animals every day. You don't realize that this is your inheritance mm -hmm. and that people will pay from England, America, Australia to go and see them. Yes. And, and you know, therefore it's up to you to protect them. That, that's your money in the bank. Yes. And particularly in Tanzania where we are, there's no gold, there's no diamonds, there's no uranium, there's no oil. There's no other source of income other than the game. And so in these schools, the Chester Zoo have given us a bus which goes round to them, very generous of them. And we say, look, um, we're not going to try and turn you into bus drivers or couriers or waiters. You, know, you do your own, own thing. Mm. We're not going to interfere with, your, interfere with your natural life. But if these tourists come, they're going to buy your father's cattle, they're going to buy your mother's vegetables, and there's going to be enough yes. money to send you on to higher education. Yeah. And that's, of course, what they all yeah. want. I think, I mean, that, it comes down to conservation in general, but, but tourism 
would be such a massive benefit to, to yeah. so many other things. I mean, you, you look at the Faroe Islands, for instance, yeah. and they have a huge whale slaughter, yes. which they put down to culture. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't want to go to the Faroe Islands, um, but if it was if they went for tourism and they were to go on holiday there and oh, say whale watching, yeah. it would be beautiful. And you know, I think you know the problem solving in Africa could come down to well, in to, some areas it's quite clever. I mean, uh, sharks don't like people. You know, and yet the South Africans have been very clever with their shark watching. Mm -hmm. you know, people go out on boats and they go in cages and you know, they're not killing the sharks, yeah. they're making money out of the sharks. Yeah. And you know, so you can make money out of wildlife without killing it. Mm -hmm. And this is the message that, you know, we've got to get across rather than just saying, here we are in, in Europe, for example, and we don't like what you mm -hmm. do. You know, you've got to offer this, them this alternative and the alternative is it's there. It's and just I, got to keep it going. And I heard that some of the tribes in, in Kenya are um, targeting the lions. The lions are taking out their livestock. Well, there's always been a conflict between Maasai and lions. And um, the, the Maasai always had to kill a lion to prove his manhood. Mm -hmm. um, they, have, they have stopped that now. Um, but they are increasing in, in population. So they need more land for their cattle. And so if lions get in the way, they, you know, they're going to be poisoned or yeah. killed. I mean, I, I, I just don't know what to think because the human population is growing and growing and growing. And, you know, how, how are we going to stop this? You know, the, the land disappearing. Uh. And when you've got man and lion and wildlife fighting for the same, same yeah. land, unfortunately, the wildlife's going to lose. And, and, and it's aggravated by the fact that you have corrupt politicians. Absolutely. We have to accept we have corrupt yeah, politicians. That's true. And in the past, um, um, leading uh, politicians in different African countries have actually been involved in the trade themselves. Yes. And the same in South Africa, with the, with the latest kind of uh, outrage with the rhinos, is that um, uh, you know you're losing an elephant every 15 minutes and a rhino every six hours at the moment. That's what's that's happening. Ridiculous, isn't it? And they found out that in fact some of the vets and some of the the game rangers in the South African Parks Board were involved. And it's because the stakes are yeah. so high, the money is so high. I know, it's awful. It's, yeah. like, it's like a battle that, that just yeah. is so difficult to win, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Tell, tell me how long you've been involved with Lion Aid for. Uh, Lion Aid for about three years, I think, yes. And um, uh, they, they contacted me and um, um, we we've, uh, immediately realised we we're on the same wavelength. And um, I've spoken on their behalf at many kind of um, fundraisers, and um, they've shared a lot of information with me because Peter, is, you know, he's a very professional researcher. Yes. And um, you know, I'm a kind of amateur yeah. who relies on someone like Peter with the facts that he can come up with, and I mean, he's he's got very fine um, 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 number counts of where where the lions are still, and in fact, there are there are any. Um, six countries in Africa where there are viable lion po populations that's, surviving. That's crazy. I mean, the West yeah. African lion's gone. Yeah. And are there any lions in Somalia? I don't think so. Not anymore. And also your experience of um, re-releasing Christian back into the wild. Yeah. I mean, how do you feel if you think our future would be just seeing lions in the zoo rather in the wild? Well, I mean, that's why we sent him back to Africa. Um, he could have very happily gone to Longleat and where he would have lived very long, comfortable, fat, lazy life. Yeah. And lions are very lazy. Yeah. You know, if they have the opportunity, yes, they would be lazy. And we thought, look, no, we, we're going to give him that chance to go because, um, you know, um, we always knew that we were only going to be temporary guardians anyhow. Yeah. And so at the end of, you know, he was a year old, he'd gone from a 35 pound cub to a 175 pound lion. And, was getting a little bit, um, he wasn't dangerous, but he was just getting too big. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking okay. to me this evening. It's All been right. wonderful. Oh, and I can't... Cool.